This is what we're looking at this morning, okay? Now, this is the first, these are the first two lines of an integral we looked at not that long ago. We looked at this, and I picked this out as an example because we noticed when we had a look at this pair of, um, this product that we were trying to integrate, you looked at it, and no matter which way you sliced it up, integration by parts, good morning, it handed you an icky VDU, right? Do you remember that? Um, well, this is, the, this is what you came up with. Basically, you either got this or plus this. Either way, bless you. Either way, it was something which we looked at and thought, that's not a standard form. What do I do with it? But we didn't give up. We said, well, let's just, let's just give it another go. So we did integration by parts once, which came to this line. And then we saw, okay, I can actually, out of this secondary integral, I can do integration by parts again. And what sort of got spawned out by this had a relationship to the original integral. Do you remember that? What do you come in? Come grab it. Say it again. Did I? Tell me. Did I... Yes, yes, you're right. Um, so, so I guess my point was that when you do integration by parts, right, and particularly when you have, like, say, these, these powers or these um, tree integrals, Often you're getting integrals that are related to your original one, right? And that was not a problem. We saw that you could actually resolve that. And that was kind of cool. Now, that idea of integrals leading to integrals is going to be our bridge into today's concept. So I'm going to introduce you to this question. I have a few here. Okay, this is the one. Okay. Now, in just the same way as we did before, we're going to approach this as integration by parts. Okay? So, it's, a, it's an obvious choice for integration by parts because you've got a product that's just kind of staring you in the face. So, what would you like me to choose for you and dv on dx? Yeah. dv on dx is dr. Okay, so I'm going to go u dv on dx. You're suggesting dv on dx to be... Okay, that's a great choice. Why is that a smart choice? Okay, because that is, like we say, oh, try and choose this, not just so that the green arrow is nice, right, but so that this is easy to integrate, and this is the easiest function to integrate, right? So, there you go, which of course leaves us with x squared here, so you've got 2x coming in over there, okay? So, so far so good. Um, you do notice that if you were to do it in reverse, if you place e to the x here, you'd still get e to the x there, right, because derivative, we get it. But you get something dramatically worse, good morning, on this second row, right? If you said dv on dx, if you let that equal x squared, then when you integrate it up, you're getting x cubed on 3. That's making the problem worse rather than better, okay? Because the degree is going up. So this looks good. I'm happy with this. So let's take this and uh, bring it into our question. So I've got uv, which is x squared e to the x, minus the integral of v du. So I've got a 2 there. I'm actually going to put that out the front since it's a constant. x e to the x with respect to x. Okay. <clears throat> now, this is very similar to the problem that we just did because I already just kind of alluded to the fact that if you slice it up a different way, it's no better. So this is as good as it gets. But the integral of x e to the x is what we've seen before. Like this comes up in extension 1. This is the classic differentiate x e to the x and hence integrate da 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 da, right? But as extension 2 students, we can handle this without any clues. What are you going to do with this? Just like before, we're going to do integration by parts again, right? So being that I've got this um, as a secondary, I'm going to use a, a new color. I've got u, du on dx. I know you could actually introduce a, um, a new pair of names for this, f and g, whatever you like. But um, I, I think this will be enough for our purposes, okay? Again, what shall I choose for my u and my dv? Okay, let's just do it again, right? It worked so well for us last time. Um, I've got e to the x over here, which means my v will be e to the x. You've got x here, and you've got 1. Now, just pause for a second. Before you put pen to paper, and bring that into our integral, right? Do you see what's happened as you've gone from step 1 integration by parts to step 2 integration by parts? Do you notice that what you've got is, like, because of this e to the x thing, that just kind of stays the same every time. But successive applications of integration by parts, they're reducing the power here to here to here. Do you see that? 
Right? So it's getting better and better each time. And then when we actually integrate this in, or incorporate it rather, I should say, you can see, good morning, you can see this is actually quite nice. So I've got my x, e to the x, stay out front, take away 2, and then here comes my new version, my red version of uv, take away the integral of v du, right? So let's go ahead and write this. There's uv, take away. Okay, so I'm sort of crowding in my own work here. I should have left some more space. But there you go, what's happened? What have we done? Well, after the first step of integrating front parts and the second step, what we're now left with here is something which all the way through, I'm gonna highlight them for you, all the way through this string of integrals are all connected, right? But the great thing here, which is even nicer than the example we saw up here, is that this is, I can just evaluate that, right? Like I have done through successive steps of integration of my parts, gotten down to something, reduced the problem down, such that, cool, I don't even need integration of my parts to do this. This is just a simple, simple thing to evaluate. So let's go ahead and finish it off. I've got x uh, squared e to the x over here. I've got 2x e to the x there, good morning. And I'm going to add there, because I've got a double negative, 2 e to the x plus a constant. Are you happy? What do you think? Yay. That was good. Uh, one last thing that is not necessary, but I can tidy this up. I see a constant factor all the way through here, so I'm just going to pull out e to the x, and I'm left with this quadratic in the brackets. Okay. So, what have we done here, right? We've gone through this number of steps of integration by parts. I had to do integration by parts twice. Why was it twice? Why did I have to do it twice this time? The first time you got this, and then the second time you got this, right? But after that, you didn't need integration by parts anymore. What it was really connected to was, again, I'll highlight it, right? It's, uh, it's this power up here. You see it was 2, and then it became 1, and then it became, there actually is an x term hiding here. It's x to the Zero. north, right? So you can now imagine, all right, suppose I had started with, this took us um, two steps of integration by parts, two applications, as it were. If I'd made this say x to the 5, right, x to the 5, like the e to the x bit, that stays the same all the way through. But this is the part that reduces. So if I had x to the 5, I'd have to do this five times. If I had x to the 500, I have to do it 500 times, okay? So whenever mathematicians see something like this, it's like, cool, I see a pattern here. We want to generalize, right? We want to say, well, what if the, the power was anything you like? 